And no matter what she says, three and a half is plenty. Hey everybody, have you ever seen the uh, Ultra 4Runners? Like the uh, off-road guys, I'll, I'll throw a picture in right, right here. So what my theory is, is I'm thinking about taking out my third brake light that's back here. Brake light, turn signals, and then maybe a reverse light going out the back. I think that'd look kind of cool on the old wagon. So that's what we're gonna experiment with today. I bought all the goodies and nothing else. I can use those in my trailer. I don't know, we'll see if it works. So let's follow along and uh, let's try this experiment together. So, this is my plan. I bought this little sheet of aluminum. I think it's like probably 12 gauge, 13 gauge, somewhere in there. Stick it out to be rigid. But what I have a plan is to run brake, turn, turn, brake, and then a reverse light that is actually a spotlight. Turn signal, turn signal, they're all flat, weatherproof LED trailer lights. So, we'll see that out. I'm gonna go out there and measure this aluminum panel and kind of cut it up and see what we want to do and yeah, let's see if that'll work so before i get started what i'm going to go ahead and do is remove this third brake light panel and the plastic here so one weird uh wagon thing i've noticed is no matter what trim color you have in your wagon this little black third brake light panel is always black i've never seen a black interior wagon but uh yeah i don't know if that has to do with like maybe just where it's at in the rear view or what but it's pitch black, 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 not dark gray, black. Yeah, I'm gonna pop this off, get the bolts out of here, and uh, see what we get to work with. Get some bulbs out. So what I'm gonna do when I get ready to do the wiring is I'm gonna use all this for the uh, brake light wiring. So that'll be, of course, the shortest route. Uh, the real problem's gonna be running the reverse and the uh, turn signals, but I, I mean, I can still route that up. I don't know if I'll be able to route it through this loom or not, but I'd like to do that. I think I could probably just drop cable down through there until it feeds out of here, this hole. And I should be able to work on that, so let's try that. Should just be able to just pop this. I hate the 30 old pops on these things. They don't make me nervous they're gonna break. But this one's pretty good. Yeah, these little pop things. Actually in good shape. Thank goodness. So, I'll grab a 10 mil. Pop this third brake light off. Pull this wiring harness up the way. I love how fresh that red paint looks. Oh, wish you could really see that on camera. The factory Rio Red is a beautiful color of these wagons. It's really underrated. It's definitely my favorite color of any of the uh, EF Civics. All right, grab a 10 mil. I seem to have sprung a leak. Seems to be holding a little bit of water in that tail light. And I guess it's cracked there. It's a funny story, the war wagon actually did that when I was at Ben's house. I actually slapped right out. There you go. That's really easy to get out. <laughs> and those, uh, I believe those two 10 mils are actually gonna be a pretty good mounting spot for uh, this light bar. All right, so there we go. Let me get this panel up here and see what we got to work with. So I want this to sit flush, at least pretty flush up against the window here. Is, Cause this is just a piece of scrap metal that I got from uh, the yard. And that's usually what I do is I just go to my local metal yard and just see what they have laying around cause you usually can get a pretty good deal on it. I've got this piece of aluminum for 10 bucks. I'm gonna skin off my bag. And I'll make a cool piece and it should be rigid enough for my lights. And the width of this, how far it can go down because if you look at it, you can only get so far down before you run out of coverage. And I don't want it to be, have like a, a, rough, a rough edge hanging off the side. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll kind of, you'll see it better when I get into it. Looks like we got about nine inches. About nine by 40. Now let's do three and a half. Now the wife's back. Say hi, wife. Say hi, wife. Hi. Rude. 
So pardon the absolute disaster in the garage. Between the LSD install, other projects going on, it just, it's piled up and I am gonna clean that very soon. But anyway, back to this video. So, what I'm going to do, was try to clean this table off the best I have. So what I'm gonna do is get my tape measure, mark off three and a half inches. I know I said three and a quarter earlier, but I'm gonna pull that back a hair. We'll do three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half here. And no matter what she says, three and a half is plenty. No matter what. What I'll do is get her clamped down. I got better clamps here somewhere. dissipates heat really quickly so I'm going to try to get this heat started because as you know aluminum radiators aluminum heat sinks they dissipate heat very quickly that's why we use it all right as you can see that was not a great success now one thing I could do that I didn't think about until just now is uh, instead of trying to bend this entire 40 inch length, I can actually split it here, here. That way it's, it's easier to form across. I may end up doing that. I usually for cutting steel and all of this stuff, I highly recommend wearing all the safety equipment. For aluminum, I'm just gonna wear my old safety glasses. Alright, now that should bend a lot easier. So after looking at it and lining it all up, this middle bend is actually a lot closer than I was thinking. That's, that's actually going to be a pretty good bend. I think. So I did some marks here where I want to trim off and I'm going to get kind of close to the marks and see, kind of chop off, see where we're at, chop and just kind of get a little bit closer, kind of sneak up to it instead of just taking a big hunk off. Because it's kind of hard to keep it level at this angle upside down and backwards. So. We'll see. I may get it close, make some preliminary bolt holes there, and maybe be able to bolt that up so we can see it a little bit better. But I'm gonna get to chopping. That's one of those things I just ran into. Uh, nothing super deal breaking, but remember earlier in this video, I showed you this line was ran out here. Well, when I'm fitting this plate up here, I'm finding it was not laying flush on the side because that whole uh, windshield washer or rear windshield washer line was actually making it push up a little bit so I rerouted it just through here and rehooked it back up. Now I could easily delete this but I want to keep as many factory cool things as I can I'd like to have the rear windshield washer still intact. All right so a little bit of an update I do have these two bolted in and uh it's looking pretty good. Uh, I still gotta do a little bit of clearance in here as you can see some of the marks I made there. So what happens is when I close this is I need to bring that side up just a hair so I need to slot this bolt hole just a little bit make that more level because it's really hard to tell on camera I'm trying to make it as level as possible because I won't be able to really get a good level in there and do what I want to do but I think that'll be getting really close if not on the money and I did check my viewing from the driver's seat because that was another thing that I was going to be worried about and 
it does de decrease my visibility of up, but I can still see behind me just fine as far as traffic and everything, so that's a good sign. This panel is a little bit bigger than I want it to be, but I think it'll actually be pretty keen for what I want to do with the brake lights, because I think it'll be able to put them here without having to like make them too far off any. So we'll try that. Give that a look, see, see what we got going here for us. All right, I got everything on, but as you can see, when I was shaping the bracket here, I made this wave just a little bit. So I think that wave a little bit, I've got this adjusted as far back as it'll go, or as it can go now. And it's really close to level, but I think it's that wave in the uh, aluminum that I left in there that's actually causing it to be a little off, off center or off level. So I'm gonna go try my handiwork trying to straighten that out. So that can only go, you know, perfectly. All right, so I got some stuff figured out there. So I did get this a little, a little bit flatter. It's obviously not perfect still. What I was doing is I was measuring from this corner to this bracket, I was getting about three and three eighths. And I got to about three and three eighths on this side as well. Just kind of leveling those two out. That kind of gave me a good point of reference to get that level. Got that bolt to the bottom, it feels pretty good and sturdy. There's still a bit of a wave there, but that's almost perfect. So I like that. And that'll allow me to start using this bottom line as a uh, reference point for when I put my lights in. So looking at my options here for light layout, I went ahead and took the bezels off and I was lining them up and all of other stuff and I looked and I was like, oh, it'd be pretty, pretty sweet to do them like angled, get a little more aggressive toward the back. But then I thought for my laziness, that's gonna be a lot harder to get those angles right on both sides and all that other stuff. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is probably what's gonna be easiest is a uh, square, clamp it flat, flush, make a line across here and get these bezels. That way I can kind of line them up where I want to start marking, get the hole saw after it and go ahead and cut these holes out. So I think that's gonna work. It won't be the, it won't be super rad, but it'll it'll serve its purpose. It'll do what I want to do. And I think for this this finish, I may grab one of these and just uh, rough up the whole face. Just go across the whole thing, just give it some swirls. I don't know. I could pass it, but I couldn't do a lot of things with it. I'm not sure yet. So what I did is I went ahead, like I said, and I clamped this straight edge to the bottom, drew a bottom line, got my bezels, and went ahead and put them here about where they should be, and then kind of measured off from here to here and mirrored that on the other side. So hopefully they're close enough. Uh, my whole point of this whole build is just see how I can do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I wanted to like look halfway decent though. <laughs> I don't want to look like nah, too much of a hack job. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get as close as I can to the center of this, give it a hole punch, and then we're going to try to go through a hole saw with a wood hole saw. And it was my brother's. He made a lot of speaker boxes with this thing. Alrighty, well, wish me luck. After a lot of fighting and drilling and obviously grinding and grinding and die grinding, this is where we're at. So I only think it looks pretty good. There, it's, a, it's really hard to get these things completely even, but so that was a little off. And I could probably straighten that off somehow. So the next question I have, I don't have a question so you guys can answer me, is I want to do a reverse light, actually spotlight. You know, you, that way when you're backing up, you can see a little better. I guess if I want to put it low, put it directly in the middle. I know I'm probably gonna put one on the rear bumper just kind of shining down and out a little bit, not so it's so visible, but so when you're backing up, you can see quite a bit. We shall see. But for now, I'm going to go work on a little bit of wiring, kind of to figure out the schematics. I'll go ahead and get these wired up, zip tied out of the way, so they can, I can put them into the uh, harness next. So, off to the wiring. All right, so preliminary wiring is done. Uh, basically, I just have the brake actually wired in right now. I know I said something about not being haggard earlier, but I'm not the best pretty wiring tuck breathing guy. I'm gonna finish them up once I make sure the proof concept works. And go plug this in and uh, test the brake lights. So as you saw, the uh, the brake lights actually work, so the brake lights will work. I do want to wire those in to be uh, running tail lights as well, so we shall see about that. I'll get all that stuff wired up and get turn signals all wired up, and that'll be all wrapped up. And I'll show you that in a future video. It won't take that long. I just I got some other things to address before we go wheeling. So we're gonna go on a little wheeling trip this weekend and I'm gonna do the rear trailing arm bushings because those really need to be changed out badly. They're completely dead. Anyway, as far as this video and the rear light brick bar or dealium and bobber, it is all done, so.
well, all done except for the last wiring on the turn signals. But until next time, guys, I'll see you later.